I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Ireland. He works at Avenard as a senior consultant, modern workplace and software engineer. He was first awarded as MVP in 2022. He is a Microsoft 365 Power Platform SharePoint consultant developer working with Microsoft technology since 2008. You can find links to his bio and social media, et cetera, in the show notes for this episode. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here. Good to have you on the show. You're from Ireland, but that name doesn't sound like an Irish name to me. Tell me a bit about where you're from. Yeah, exactly. I live in Ireland, but I'm not from Ireland. So I, I am from Brazil. So I was born in Brazil. I worked with Microsoft Technologies for a long time, since 2008. Then I moved to Ireland in 2018, the beginning of the year. I basically, you know, I was hired by an Irish company. Did all my interviews online, applied for a visa, then it was successful. I moved to Ireland. And then the funny the funny thing is that now I am like MVP in office apps and business apps as well. But I, I when I moved to Ireland, I moved to Ireland to work only with SharePoint. But I started working with the power platform in, in my SharePoint job. And then I you know, as soon as time passed, I, I was more involved with biz apps. And now I fully work only with these apps, not SharePoint anymore. <laughs> what a transition. So does that mean you're no longer building with um you're no longer building with with SharePoint as a back end? Are you using Dataverse for everything or are you still using SharePoint as your No, it's currently the project I am working with is Power Pages based on Dataverse only. So like there are a few SharePoint integrations, but the the, the core of it is just Dataverse. Yeah. Wow. So tell me a bit about living in Ireland. What part of Ireland do you live? Is your family with you? Do you, What do you do for fun? Dublin, yeah. I moved to Ireland by myself, so I was single at that time. So it was, it was a good point in my life to leave everything behind and move, you know. <laughs> what I like to do for fun, I like to, to meet friends and, you know, maybe go out for drinks, go to the gym. It's pretty much pretty, you know, convenient. How can I say? Um not convenient, uh, traditional stuff, you know, nothing special. I like to go to rock concerts. That's one thing that I'd like to highlight about myself. So, like, I'm a bi- uh, big fan of metal concerts and uh, rock concerts. So, like, in here in Dublin, it was good for me because I, could, because I could go to a lot of rock gigs here, which I couldn't go to the city, uh, in the city I lived in Brazil. Because normally they, u- they used to, the, the, most of the best bands, they used to go only to Sao Paulo and Rio and not the city I lived. So it, it was a good opportunity here as well to me, like to go to rock concerts and also to travel around Europe, which is something I really love to do in like when I am on holidays, you know. So a lot of those concerts, are they in Dublin or as you say, are they across Europe and it's just so easy to jump on Ryanair and be in some other place quickly? I went to one concert outside of Ireland only, but all of uh, the other concerts I, I, I'm, I usually go there in Dublin. Yeah, there's a lot of good concerts in Dublin. Yeah. Have you done the electric picnic? I've never, I've never been to electric picnics. Do you believe that? Wow. I've been to the electric picnic. Yeah. But like there's lots of like lots of big bands like Metallica, Slipknot. Yeah. <laughs> all, yeah. They all come to Dublin. They all come to Dublin, yeah. yeah. Now you say you, you get out and like to have a drink. You wouldn't be able to, it'd be hard pressed to find a good place to drink in Dublin, wouldn't it? Uh, it's really hard to find. You know? It's really hard to, to choose one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know? which, which one do you choose? Where do you go to? There's just so much choice, right? 
Uh, anywhere around Temple Bar, yeah. Yeah. But there's a there's a pub that I like a lot here. It's called the Porterhouse. Like I'm doing free merchandising for the pub because <laughs> this it's a it's a local local Irish pub and they do their craft beers. And it's my favorite one, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great city. I do love it. Um, my wife used to um, go there for a lot of her job while we were living in London, and so I just tag along just so, as you can say, you go drink in Temple Bar, and I'd always make sure our hotel was in Temple Bar. So. Uh, yeah, good times. Yeah, and it's good because I live close to the city center, so it, you know, easy to go and come to pubs. Yeah. Do you use the loose much? The Lu- Luas, you mean the the tram? Yeah. 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 Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. When I worked at Microsoft there, I always found I would always take that out to the Microsoft campus from town. You you worked in Ireland for Microsoft, or did you work in the UK and you used to come to Ireland? No, I I, I was actually. When I did some work for Microsoft in Ireland, I was actually working in Australia and they paid for me to fly up to Dublin for a week and train a whole bunch of Microsoft partners in in uh, Ireland around, uh, back then it was Dynamics 365 architecture, my training course was on for a week. And then, um, and uh yeah, so I stayed in in the right in the center of town and would go out on the loose each day to uh, to Microsoft. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way to go to the Microsoft office here. Yeah, I can easily go from the place I live to to Microsoft's office by getting the Lewis. Yeah, it's the quickest, quickest. So back in Brazil, how did you get into IT? Oh, sorry, one thing, one question. What's the best drink? What's the best Brazilian drink to drink? Best Brazilian drink to drink. I would say uh, I'm not a. To be honest, myself, I'm not a fan of that. But I would recommend you try caipirinha because everyone likes it. <laughs> so, I like I like I just like beer, honestly. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would like Brazilian beer, but to be honest, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Brazilian beers. To be honest, so it's hard to recommend. Yeah, yeah, caipirinhas. You can't go past those. I always carry all the ingredients. I can make one anytime in my bar. But uh, do you like do you like your Guinness? I like Guinness, yeah. I like Guinness, and the, the Irish people are going to complain about me because I love Heineken as well. So <laughs> normally, it's like I like Guinness. I think my favorites are Guinness and Heineken. It's totally different, but if you mean that about the main the mainstream beers, you know. Yeah. Um. While I was there, I remember a guy told me a joke. He said, "What's a seven course Irish dinner?" Seven. And it was a six pack of yeah seven pork course Irish dinner is a six pack of Guinness and and, and a bowl of potatoes. <laughs> it was an Irishman that told me that joke. So uh, yeah, yeah, um, I do remember it. Do remember it. Um, tell me, what was your? How did you get into IT and M three six five SharePoint that type of thing? What was that? What was that journey for you? To be honest, um, I, uh, my story is a bit awkward because when I started studying for college, I wasn't sure of what I would like to do. But I really liked to, to play with computers, software, and things like that. I did computer science. I studied computer science at that point. I didn't enjoy too much my college, but I was, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do, so I, I had to do a college course. I, I preferred to do that course than to do nothing. And it was on a federal university in Brazil, so I didn't have to pay to study. But at the end of the day, I think I learned a lot during my course. And then I got a job in a Microsoft partner. I never touched anything Microsoft during my college course. So I, like in my college course, I, I learned a little bit of HTML, JS, CSS. I used to play with PHP. <laughs> I learned how to program in Java. I never worked with any of those tech. But then I moved to that company and they hired me in a process that was a trainee process. So they basically hire people with no experience and they train them in Microsoft for Microsoft technologies for two or three months or so. And then I joined that company as a .NET developer. I worked for one year and a half or so as a .NET developer. And then SharePoint started to be trendy and they needed developers to work with SharePoint. So they kind of picked up the the guys that they, I think that they seem to, to be uh, persons that were willing to learn a new technology 
and they we they moved us to the I, I forgot the name of the department, but it was like SharePoint team or something like that, right? Then I started to work as a SharePoint developer slash consultant. And I was working like that until 2017. And even in 2017, I, I had a I had started with some contacts with the Power Platform, but really few projects that I touched. Like I used a, a bit of Power BI. I developed some Power Automate flows, some small things in Power Apps, but really basic. And then that was the move. Uh, then I moved to Ireland. Then I started to be more focused, like divide my my focus between M365 and Power Platform. And in that company in Brazil, I forgot to mention it. Um, I was I started working obviously at that point. It was only SharePoint on premises. And then I believe it was around 2015, 2016 that everybody started migrating to SharePoint Online. And then that was the door to start working with Power Platform because the, the how can I say, the easiest way to, to customize SharePoint at that point would be by like creating workflows. Like if you, if you mean low code customizations would be by using Power Platform. And I always had the approach, you know, I, I, I was a developer, but I knew how to do things using low code as well. So it was like a mix and match. Whatever I couldn't do with low code approach, I would do I would do pro code stuff to achieve what I needed. So that's why I'm I consider myself still a developer and consultant. So I go a mi- a mix of both approaches. You know? What was that move like for you going from Brazil to Ireland? What what made you think that hey you were going to to move countries and and what was the process of, of um, as in, when I say the process, what was the technical, like, what was involved in actually relocating, getting a visa, all that kind of things, and going to a totally different country? I, I would like to mention one thing before, before I explain the whole process, because I think I didn't do the decision out of nowhere. I already had spent some time on holidays in Ireland. So I liked Dublin, I liked the city, and I started thinking, hey, I could find a job here in Ireland. <laughs> then I started applying to a few jobs online, and then at, at some point I was successful in one. And the story is, the co- that company that hired me, basically, they they asked for some paper ships, some references to contact your references, like probably, you know, to validate if what you're saying is, is true in the interviews and all of that. But they... After I sent the information to the guys, they basically fill the paperwork in the Irish government, and I have to do a, some bits by myself. So it's like a link to the form to continue providing information. So I filled it. The, the HR guy submitted it, based, and then I kept I, I kept contact with him over email. One month after that, he notified me that the visa was approved. Like it was, it's not the visa itself. It's the it's a work permit. So it's a paper you you you. You prove that you had a job offer, then it was approved. You can use that to enter Ireland. When you land in Ireland, you have to then get that paper and apply for a visa. Then you get like an ID card to work in Ireland. Yeah. And then I, when I moved, I kind of, you know, had to schedule the appointments with the government as everybody has to do, get my paper, get, then exchange, not, not exchange, but, you know, use my paper to get my permit to live in Ireland. Then I had to move, find a like I had to find a house to live here, which is a bit complicated sometimes because it's not there's not much houses to live. At that point it was okay. It was okay for me because I, I shared a house. But it's not something I I kinda enjoyed too much because I that was a, a a rough move in the beginning because I kinda had my own apartment in Brazil. I used to rent it by myself. And then in Ireland, as you don't find things easily, you have to live sometimes sharing with other people, you know. And you have to adapt a little bit. But it was in the past. Was the reason for moving <clears throat> because you loved Dublin and Ireland so much, or <clears throat> were you wanting to get out of Brazil? No, I, di- I didn't have any reasons ex- specifically to get out of Brazil. I had a good life there. It was just in terms of I, I wanted a different experience living in a different country and working and living in English, right? And that's actually, it was it was tough to me like um, because when I moved, I, I actually, I learned English when I was a teenager. So I was a bit rusty, right? I used to read a lot, watch a lot of videos, 
But as I joined the consultancy company, I had to ramp up really quickly to improve kind of, you know, my English to a level that I could really work well in English and not only be a, a pure developer, you know. That was the initial struggle, you know. Have you traveled to Portugal since you've been there? I traveled to Portugal two times, yeah. Yeah? Do you like Portugal? Yeah, I, 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 I loved it, yeah. Yeah, I, I could see myself living in Porto in Portugal. I went, I, I never been to Porto. I went to Lisbon and to uh, Albufeira, which is in a region called Algarve, the beautiful beaches, right? Yes, yes. I've stayed for a week down there uh, on the beach, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Very cool, very cool. How did you become an MVP? During COVID, I had a friend who was already an MVP, David Ramalho, and he, he became an MVP because of blogging, right? And he he kind of, I forgot the, the exact expression, but he tried to motivate me to become more active with blogging and contributing to some community samples. There is a, a community called the Microsoft 365 PNP. Have you heard of it? Like they publish Power Platform samples or SharePoint code samples and things like that. And I started to become more active with my blog and contributing to that community. So I think that that was the the main reason that uh, that made me become an MVP. I spoke in a few conferences as well. I'm always very active on LinkedIn, Twitter, but I believe like the main the main reason was like my blogging and online support to people, maybe answering questions on my blog on LinkedIn and all of that. Yeah. Nice. Of of the suite of tools in the Power Platform, what's your favorite? Favorite, I'd say Power Apps, Power Pages. It's not only one Power, power Apps, Power Pages, and Power Automate. <laughs> power Automate, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where you're mainly working these days. Yeah, yeah. That's my main. That's my main focus now. Currently, it's mainly Power Pages based on Dataverse, a bit of model driven apps as well. Um. But yeah, it's like I'm I'm working on a project that's related to Power Pages, but it's like heavily customized with custom JS, a lot of liquid code in the pages as well, some integrations, which is nice for me because I really like that pro code side of things, right? I like to use Power Platform, but also to be customizing with you know real advanced development technologies, you know, or techniques. Let's say. What advice would you give for? others that want to become an MVP? I think um, at least from what I could see, what I spoke to people when I became an MVP, from what I see to from others that became an MVP as well is like to try to make your contributions meaningful. So for example, in, in my case, I focus on blogging because that's what I find more comfortable to do. And I think it's the it's what I can write or produce that's more useful for the community. And I'm not kind of, you know, I, I when I write, I, I write because I already have some content that I think that's useful for others. So I'm not writing just because of writing. And some people, I think they try to write or produce a lot of, of content just to get a, a high volume, but maybe it's not impactful. And it's nice to see, like, if I follow my, my blog, the the people making comments or the views or people finding my content from Google, it's really nice that you see the reach you have with your small piece of content, you know. So I really say try to focus on things you are more comfortable with and, you know, you are more passionate about. So in my case, I solve problems, write about the problems I solved or some tips. and It's pretty much what I, I try to focus, yeah. I notice that you have a lot of followers on LinkedIn. You got over 11,000 followers. How, how have you built up that audience? Man, it's basically, I write a lot of content for LinkedIn as well, right? In, in my blog. Some of the some of the posts I see that depending on the way I write, I actually try to, to write them well, very well written in a way that, you know, it's useful for people as well. I'm not only copying and pasting content, so I summarize them in a very useful way. So I just, I just feel that sometimes as link, LinkedIn is a platform that, it, it helps the helps your posts to increase a higher reach. So depending on the post I, I write or, or I publish, after I, I post something that has a lot of likes, I see a lot of people following me and, and adding me as connection. So it simply grows by itself. And I, I have the account since 
10 years ago, I'd say. But I think since I became an MVP, I, th I think when, before I became an MVP, I was like, I, I had less than 3K followers. <laughs> yeah, and I really, especially when I post individual, my, uh, my own written content, I think it has higher reach. It's definitely good, definitely good to see that your, you know, your, your audience has been developed because of the great content that you're producing. And I think that's a, that's a great tip there to, to aspiring MVPs that, you know, your stuff should be good enough that people want to read and engage with it and learn from it. And, and, uh, yeah. Because that's, that's, yeah, it actually touches the point I was mentioning about, you know, not repeating or just posting by posting. So like I, I kind of the, the, even like I have my own blog post. That's one point, and the LinkedIn content that I post, I try to focus on even on or news or tips that I find relevant. So it's it's just not some people, for example, they have Power Automate posts that kind of automate automatically post content that they find without even reviewing it. So I I don't do it. Like I I follow a lot of people. Then if I find something interesting, I save it, check it later, do some you know. I shorten the content a little bit to put what's more relevant, and that's it. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 Guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 Guy. Thanks again, and see you next time.